Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm your host, Elder Gregory Newsom with the Faith in God Internet TV. God bless you on this wonderful Wednesday. We bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who's ahead of our life. We give honor uh, to our pastor, Bishop Dr. Ellis Murchison, Sr. of the Pentecost Power Church, and to uh, Lady Paulette Murchison, and to my own lovely wife, Missionary Newsom, and to all of you that have joined us today. Uh, we say praise the Lord. Uh, we have uh, a lot before us today, but we want to uh, thank you all for just joining in with us uh, on this wonderful Wednesday to uh, take a look at um, uh, these seven dispensations. We're still going to finish up conscience, uh, which uh, as we talk about it today, we're going to go a little bit more in depth uh, so we can finish it off. And then we'll start government today as well. Human government. So we're going to talk about the human government. And so there's some things I thought would be very interesting as we search the word of God that we can look at today. And so um, before we get started into our lesson plan, we want to uh, definitely acknowledge God through prayer. And then we want to get into uh our sidebar, and then we'll get into the word of the Lord. So first thing we want to do is ask uh, the saints to continue to pray for all of those that are uh, having sickness, those that uh, have different needs need to be met in terms of uh, soul salvation, uh, those that need deliverance, uh, those that need healing in their bodies, and especially those that are uh, suffering loss, and I believe that this hour we want to pray definitely for um, our leadership, uh, Bishop, our presiding Bishop, Bishop Dr. Charles Bennett, and our assistant presider, Bishop uh, Webb, and also their wives on today. Let us pray for them, and let us continue to pray for the Executive Council Board of Bishops. Let us pray for them that the Lord will continue uh, to bless them and strengthen them as well. Uh uh, let us continue to pray one for another, continue to pray for those that are sick, shut in, those that are confined to the homes and their spaces. Uh, a special prayer for those um, that are uh, being a part of our uh, chain consecration. So we ask that um, you continue to pray for that. <clears throat> uh, that we will pray one for another. Uh, remember, uh, pray for all of our local churches as well as our said district churches. Uh, remember to pray for me and Sister Newson and our family, excuse me. <clears throat> uh, continue to pray for our family. And please uh, just remember to pray for your neighbor. Um, there's so much going on um, in the time in which we live. Uh, we can see infighting not only uh, in the world, but we can see it all over the place. And so the only thing we have to do is open up our eyes and we know there's things that we can petition the Lord for that will help us as a people of God stay focused. And so that's one of the main things that I wanted to ask for prayer for, that the people of God will remain steadfast in prayer and in supplication. And so these are the things that I'm petitioning for because there's a lot of strongholds, uh, if the truth be told, among the people of God, that's only going to be pulled down through prayer. And so we're asking the saints to uh, sincerely pray for us and our family. Now, uh, a lot of times uh, people uh, need to make sure that their prayer is directed in such a way that is focused on, uh, you know, the body of Christ and the spiritual need. We know God will supply a natural need. And if we do 
uh, the necessary things we need to do. He will definitely come through and aid us in getting those things taken care of. So we don't want to just focus on natural things. We want to ask the Lord to uh, help us in our spiritual walk and have spiritual fortitude just to be able to, uh, as we go through these dispensations and look at the degradation and how man has left God, we want to pray that we will have, you know, uh, a clear uh, focus and thought as we move forward through the remaining of this year that we as a people of God, that we will use these uh, different dispensations that we're going through for our admonition and our learning that we'll be able to reflect and say, this is a fallen man's state of mind. And so we don't want to be claiming Christ walking in a fallen state. And that's one of the things, the reason why I thought it would be good to bring out uh, these seven dispensations. We know what dispensation we're in. We're on the grace and truth. We want to make sure that we don't molest grace. And so these are some of the things we're going to talk about throughout the broadcast and our teaching plan today. But as we ask for prayer, we want you to sincerely pray uh, for us and our family, pray for the Faith in God Internet TV broadcast and those that we're working with. Uh, we're trying to um, get some things done where we can uh, partner with others and build a stronger bridge and relationship with other believers that we'll be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, throughout uh, various platforms, okay? So that's what we're designed to do. Uh, if you need prayer, uh, it's on the screen. Uh, it was on the screen momentarily. So if you need prayer, please contact us. We'll definitely pray for you and your family. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get into our prayer, and then we're going to go into our teaching plan. So go with us in prayer. There are just so many things on my heart that uh, – I would just say that sometimes it, it bothers us because we really want to uh, sincerely be praying for the different things that will strengthen the body of Christ. And so we all need strength. Uh, pray that God will strengthen, uh, especially my pastor, Bishop, and Lady Paulette, that the Lord continue to strengthen them as uh, they continue to um, move forward with the Pentecost Power Church, Milwaukee. Let's continue to pray for them, that God will aid them and uh, give them the wisdom and the direction that they need to continue uh, to help the people of God. All right? All right? So let us go before his throne as we ask um, for you pray for all of our mothers, deacons, ministers, evangelists, and uh, the auxiliaries. Pray for the young men and young ladies in our ministry that God will continue to save and um, pray for Brother Evans. Um, and there's many others that's on our prayer list. Pray for those that are tearing on altar for the Holy Ghost. Um, pray for my sister Luvenia. Pray for um, all of these different souls that just recently got baptized. Let us pray that God will fill those souls with the Holy Ghost. Please pray for our grandchildren. Pray for uh our daughter, Gabrielle, uh, please pray that God would just uh, continue to touch the mind and hearts of uh, the Newsom family. So please pray for us, and uh, we definitely would appreciate that. So let us go before his throne. We're going to go to our scripture, which is found in Second Chronicles uh, 7 and 14 through 16. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend to the prayer that is made in this place. 
For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Let us go before the throne of great grace briefly here. Eternal God, our Savior, in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now. We thank you, O oh God, for your presence. We thank you, O oh God, for being so good unto the people of God. We thank you, O oh God. There's none like you. And Lord, there's no one that can, O oh God, do the things that you do. And so, Father, we give you praise and we give you thanks for all the many blessings that we have received up until this present time. And we're not just, O oh God, thanking you for Oh, God, uh, the things that we have, but we're thanking you for all things, God, that you've created in Christ Jesus and that you've caused us, oh, God, to be beneficiaries of the things, oh, God, through your death, burial and resurrection, that we're able to receive them through the spirit. And God, we ask that you would continue to give increase as we pray, oh, God, to our spiritual man and our vessels, God, that we would continue, Lord God, to. Oh, God, surrender and yield our vessels. Oh, God, in sanctification and in honor that you might bless and you might strengthen, you might encourage somebody throughout not only this broadcast, but throughout, oh, God, our witness in our lives. Oh, God, help us to continue to be the light. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, that was shining in a dark place. Look on our pastor, Bishop Murchison and Lady Paulette and the Pentecostal Power Church, Milwaukee. Oh, God, look on the bereaved families at this hour in the name of Jesus. We pray for our sick. We pray for those in the hospital. Pray for Pastor Reese and various ones that said, pray for us, God. Touch them right now. Look on the Parker family. Look on the Jones family. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that you would send comfort and strength like only that you can. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you for it right now. And send encouragement, God. Oh, God, in the midst of thy people. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, direct us through the word of the Lord as we, oh, God, humble ourselves before you and ask you to direct our hearts. Oh, God, that you would increase and, oh, God, that we would decrease. This we ask now in the precious name of Jesus. And, Lord, we ask you to send strength to, oh, God, the body of Christ. Look on our presider, assistant presider, look on Oh, God, Bishop Emeritus, Bishop Scott and his family. And look on all the saints, oh, God, that striving, God, for perfection. And continue, Lord God, oh, God, to be glorified through you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we give you all the glory and the praise. And we thank you right now. Look on Missionary Newsom, touch our body right now. We thank you for healing. We thank you for what you're doing already. And God, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. Look on our daughter, Gabrielle. Look on our grandchildren. Look on the family, oh God, in the church. Touch God. Oh God, send, send, oh God. Hallelujah. Send the help, God, that's needed, God. And we pray, oh God, that thine will would be done. Not my will, but thine will be done. As we give you all the glory and the praise, and we thank you for it. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray to the glory of God. And we give thanks to you in Jesus name. Thank God. Amen. And amen. Praise God. So we want to be brief today. We thank God for the prayer. I uh, hope that some have uh, joined in with us today. So we're going to uh, jump in here and uh, take a look. Uh, I want to take a look at a few things here as we uh, take a look at Genesis chapter six. We're going to talk about conscious as we finish up our series on conscious and uh, had such a busy week uh, with some things that we're doing. And so we ask you to just follow along <clears throat> with our series, uh, season 11, season 337. And we'll be picking up season 338 uh, if the Lord's will uh, partially today, but we'll uh, just continue to update each uh broadcast so you can follow along uh, where we are. So we're going to uh, Genesis chapter six. Please go there with us today. I'm going to read a few scriptures um, 
a lot of you are familiar with Genesis, which is technically the the beginning of uh, of uh, humanity and God starting His uh, relationship through these uh, seven dispensations. But we're going to uh, go to dispensation number two, which deals with the conscious of humanity. I want to let you know that conscious was primarily uh, 600 years, that uh, um, the length of this dispensation of conscious was 600 years, even though uh, I would say right within, you know, uh, right before Methuselah died, it's a little bit 600 years. I just, I'll just summarize it based on what historians have here that as I research from Adam uh, to uh, Noah's life was 600 years. Now we know Methuselah, uh, he uh, had 969 years, but we, we just dealing with it from um, Adam to Noah adds up to be about 600 years. Now you have to research it, but from Adam to Noah, it's about 600 years. But um, we don't know how long Adam and Eve was in the garden before they sinned. So uh, if you have that information, please send it to me because uh, I don't really have uh, concrete evidence. We know, you know, based on uh, God's, you know, style of doing things and timing, you know, each dispensation is um, 1,000, 2,000 years. So that's pretty much what I've seen repetitiously uh, throughout the scripture, but I don't have any concrete evidence. So this is just research that I'm doing. So uh, if you have more concrete uh, theological data, uh, please send it uh, to us. But we know the total years from Adam to Noah's flood uh, ends up being about 1,656 years. All right. Uh, so 1,656 years from Adam to Noah until the flood. And so this is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about uh, in Genesis chapter 6, and let's just jump to it real quick. We're going to jump chapter 6, and then we'll jump right over to chapter 7. Uh, man's tendency was to uh, leave God. And we're going to take a look at it because we talked about it as we closed out. So we're just doing a quick review as we move forward. Just doing a quick glance here at Genesis 6 and 11. All right. And it says here, the earth was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted his ways upon the earth. Hmm? Now notice man have a tendency to corrupt him own self. This is why there is a need for salvation. This is why there is a need for God, uh, uh, a relationship mm, to keep man balanced. Mm? Man became unbalanced when he sinned. Mm? And I just want to let you know that it's important to see that man tends to uh, gravitate away from God since the fall of Adam. And we can see that trade not only in conscience here, but we can see it in our dispensation on the grace and truth. We can see uh, people will <clears throat> get saved, get filled with the Holy Ghost, and then they'll get into a state of inconsistency and they'll lose their vitality. They'll lose their desire. They'll lose their want to. And church is no longer 
exciting to them. Hmm? Oh, glory be to God. Does that sound like, oh, glory to God. Does that sound like some of the uh, things that you're witnessing? And so people tend to drift into their own ideology and they way of worship. And we don't want to lose our fire uh, this late in the evening. And so I want to encourage the people of God. And as I read verse number, um, uh, let's go to uh, verse number 13. He says here, uh, and God said unto Noah, this is 6 and 13. We're going to stop right there. And God said unto Noah, um, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Hmm? And so we we can see that when uh, a man drifts away from God, uh, the wrath of God uh, ends up bringing judgment. So now that we know that God is 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 a God sovereign God, and and when we drift away from Him to a point where we just will not uh, uh, get. Uh, back in relationship with God, there's always um, a cause and then there's an action, all right? So for every cause, there's an action. And so God's action was to destroy uh, them with the earth. Let's take a look. Let's go to Genesis chapter 7. Let's take a look. Uh, the flood <laughs> represented judgment. Hmm? We can see the flood in this dispensation represented judgment. All right, let's take a look at uh, Genesis chapter 7. And uh, let's go to uh, Genesis 7 and uh, 6. Let's go to 7 and 6, Genesis 7 and 6. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of the waters was upon the earth. He was 600 years old. And Noah went in and his sons and his wife and his sons, wives, with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Of clean beasts and beasts that are not clean, and of the fowls and of everything that creep upon the earth. And there went in two and two unto Noah into the ark, male and female, as God had commanded Noah. Look at this. And it came to pass after seven days that the water of the flood were upon the earth. He says, in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, 17th day of the month, this is February 17th, all right? He says, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were open and the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. All right? Can we see that? It was on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. All right, let's jump down to uh, verse number uh, 23. And he says here, And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle and creeping things and the fowl of heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth 150 days. 150 days is almost six months. Hmm? It's 30 days short of six months. Five months. If it's 30 days, approximately 30 days in a month, um, 
you know, 150 days. It's almost five months. So that's you know, close to five months. Yeah, so I just said approximately five months. So when we look at this, this is how long the water was on the ground. Now, what we want to talk about is we want to talk about man leaving God. Judgment follows. So even though God sent judgment, we got to look at God always affords us to obtain grace through faith. Notice that Noah, his family, and his sons, hmm, and their wives, their three wives, was able to enter into the ark and get protection. It's important. It's important that we understand under grace and truth, we have protection. All glory be to God. Hmm? By grace. Hmm? We have we have the protections of God given to us by grace. And so it's very important that we understand grace is God's unmerited favor. It's given to us without any merit. Hmm? Nothing you need to do for it to get it. All right? So it's very important that we understand this. But as we look at the judgment that came uh, upon them, we got to look at that God uh, allowed this judgment to come. He opened the window uh, to start the rain, and he closed the window to stop the rain. It's very important that we see this. Under grace, we must understand uh, as we look at conscience and contrast grace with it, there's a door open to the Gentiles to be saved. Oh, glory be to God. Hmm? There's a door that's open to us uh, as Gentiles to be saved under grace and truth. But just as he opened that window of grace to us, that window will be closed. We must understand this as believers. Oh, glory be to God. We don't know when God going to close the door, just like they didn't know when he was going to close the door on the ark. I know I'm messing up already. Oh, glory be to God. Hmm? We don't know when the last Gentile going to come on. But scripture says now, Simeon had declared that God did visit the Gentiles to take out of him a people for his name's sake. So it's very, very important that we understand that uh, grace uh, could end at any time. So when we look at conscience, we look at judgment, and we look at the grace of God even in conscience. Grace was extended. Let me show you. Let's go back to Genesis 6 and 8. I want to show you. Let's go to uh, Genesis 6 and 5 through 8. I want to show you that grace was extended. Let's take a look at Genesis uh, 6 and, uh, let's see, 6 and 5. Uh, let's go to 6 and 5 through 8. Let's take a look. It says here, and God saw that wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. Verse number six, Genesis six and six. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I would destroy man whom I've created from the face of the earth both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowl of the air for it repented me that I've made them. Look at this. Verse number eight. Here's the star verse. Mark this verse because we're going to go back to it when we get to grace. Genesis six and eight. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Hmm? So a lot of people want to talk about Noah's life. They want to talk about things that Noah did. They want to talk about things that different patriarchs did throughout the scripture. They want to talk about Abraham. He lied. 
You know, Sarah, she laughed. They want to talk about different imperfections in these different patriots. But as we can see, they didn't have to be perfect as we qualify them. Oh, glory be to God. But they had to be perfect as God qualified them to obtain grace through faith. Oh, glory be to God. Look at this. Oh, this is very important that we look at this. I know, I know I'm not uh dealing with the uh, the theology of this. I'm just dealing with the basis of grace through faith. Now let's take a look. Verse uh Genesis 6 and 8. He says here, um, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's what it says here. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Hmm? Now you might have had you might have had some uh <clears throat> some opinion. But we gotta understand the people sin grieve God at his heart. Hmm? We have to understand when we sin, we break God's heart. As the people sinned in Noah's day, we need to understand, we need to follow Noah's example and to be able to find grace hmm? in spite of the sin that surrounds us. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Huh? In spite of the sin that surrounds us, we can be perfect. Hmm? I know it can be done. We got to have faith to believe this. All right? Now, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11 as we close out conscious. I want to Close our conscience with Hebrews chapter 11. Um, I know it's a lot we got to get to, but we're going to close it out. And uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Stay with me. We're going to try to close it out and we're going to go into uh, human government. All right, Hebrews chapter 11. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to jump around in Hebrews chapter 11. So let's go to uh, Hebrews 11 and 4. All right, let's take a look at Hebrews 11 and 4. It says here, By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. We talked about Cain and Abel by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, yet speak it. All right? Let's take a look. Verse number five. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for um, before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Hmm? Look at this. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Hmm? So that tells me, I've read this scripture so many times, but the re revelation of Enoch is saying, Enoch had faith in God. Hmm? Let's take a look. Let's slow roll it and show you that Enoch, had faith in God by grace through faith. Enoch had faith in God. It says by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Hmm. Look at this by faith. Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And he was not found because God translated him for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now, uh, the hall of faith, Hebrews is called the hall of faith. He starts out saying, you know, um, that faith is required. All right. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Notice the writer says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. But Enoch had a testimony that he pleased God. So this tells us 
This describes to us that Enoch possessed faith. Oh, glory be to God. I know. I'm, let, me, let, me, let me slow roll it. Enoch believed God. Hmm? And so no matter what dispensation, I know I'm going to, I know I'm going to rock some boats today. <clears throat> no matter what dispensation, whether it be from innocence hmm? whether it be from innocence to grace faith was required or faith was an in integral part in man's relationship hmm? a healthy relationship with God I'll use the word healthy because when faith wasn't there, uh, there was no healthy relationship. We can see uh, man's tendency, oh, glory be to God, to drift and leave God because he didn't believe. Hmm? And Israel could not go into the promised land because they didn't possess this prerequisite that we call faith. Oh, glory be to God. Let me get out of here. I got to let you go now. But I want to give you something to think about as I talk about this today, because when we look at human government, uh, oh, glory be to God. When we look at human government, we're going to talk about how nor uh, worship God and establishes a new covenant. Hmm? And so as we transition over into human government, let's take a look at the last thing in conscious. Let's go to uh, uh, let's go to uh, Hebrews 11 and seven. Hmm? By faith, Noah being warned of God, of these things, not seen as yet, moved with fear. Noah had never seen a boat, never built a boat before, and he had never seen rain. Oh, glory be to God. But he trusted God's word. Notice, he took God's word he took God at his word hmm? and he started working. It's important that we look at this. It says by faith, nor being warned of God of these things, not as yet move with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by which he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, which is by faith. Hmm? Look at this. By faith, he became the heir of righteousness. It's important. Mark that scripture as well. It's important that we see he was the heir of righteousness. Go to 1 Peter uh, chapter 3. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3. And we're going to go to about <clears throat> 1 Peter 3 and 18. All right? Let's go to 1 Peter 3 and 18. It says, For Christ had also, for Christ also had once suffered for sins. The just for the unjust. Hmm? Now, Noah had to suffer some mocking and some scoffing hmm? that he might bring us to God. Hmm? Noah's whole purpose of obeying God was to save souls. Hmm? He obeyed God and he was going to save souls. And if he couldn't save souls, he needed to save his own house. 
Come on, let me get out of here. I got to go. Hmm? What are you saying, Brother Newsom? Hmm? No matter what dispensation you're in, if you, oh, glory be to God, didn't take it up as your responsibility to be your brother's keeper, hmm? you at least had the responsibility of, key, of, of securing and saving your own house. Hmm? Now, let's take a look here. It says here <clears throat> that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, uh, which were sometime disobedient. Now, did them people obey Noah? No, they did not. Hmm? When did they did they obey Noah's preaching and teaching? No. And which was sometime disobedient, when once were long suffering of God, waited in the days of Noah. Hmm? Look, can we see grace operating even in a dispensation of conscience? This is what I'm trying to do in these series of teaching. I'm trying to get us to see that grace operated all the way from the beginning hmm, until grace was fulfilled through Jesus Christ. Hmm? And he's, he that giveth grace, the Bible said, he giveth more grace. Oh, glory be to God. Now that Jesus has come on the scene, we have more grace than they had. <laughs> oh, let me get out of here. I know, I know you don't see it the way I see it, but I'm just using the scriptures hmm? uh, to point out huh, the scriptorial facts that sometimes seem to be a, a little bit abstract to us. We don't see it. Hmm? But I'm using these scriptures so we can see that grace, all oh, glory be to God, has not, all oh, glory be to God, been erased. Let's take a look. It says here, verse 20, 1 Peter 3 and 20, which was sometime disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. You mean to tell me God has patience? <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Even under conscience, God waited while the ark was preparing. When a uh, few, that is eight souls, were saved by water. Now, I thought this was a great mathematical equation. Some of y'all mathematicians helped me with this. Verse number 21, the like figure. Now, this is an equation. Hmm? It says, we're in that is eight souls were saved by water. And the equation is, the like figure, wherein to even bapti baptism, do it now also save, not putting away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. Now look at this. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and power being made subject unto him. Everything is being made subject unto the one that's given us grace. Hmm? Now, it's important that we take a look here and see uh, that we are the same partners While we are under grace and truth, we are the same partners with Christ. We must suffer also, even under the dispensation of grace, as, as God suffered with the people of God in the Old Testament, which was a shadow. Uh, I, know I'm, I know I'm messing up. It's just as God suffered and waited and had patience on those wicked folk under, under these other dispensations, even under grace, we too partners with Christ with his suffering while we're waiting on God to come back for the church. Did I make that connection? <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Huh? We are suffering also some things. Uh, pastors and bishops and uh, saints, 
We're suffering some things right now. All oh, glory be to God. Hmm? While God is doing what he's doing, all oh, glory be to God. Hmm? We can see this connection. Grace through faith allows us to wait. All oh, glory be to God. Grace through faith allows us to wait. Hmm? Because without the Holy Ghost, we wouldn't wait. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Let me let me get out of here. Without the Holy Ghost, we wouldn't wait on the Lord. Oh, glory. Some with it, uh, let me quit. They ain't listening to it. That's why they won't wait. Hmm? But if we continually look at these different dispensations, we can see grace working through all of them. All right? So let's go to human government. We're going to go to human government now, and uh, we'll pick it up if the Lord's will. On Friday, we hopefully will do our prayer and touch and agree hour, but we'll pick up the human government. We're getting ready to close now. Oh, yeah, we 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 almost out of time. We got about uh, probably about 10 more minutes. All right. So on the human government, stay with us as we introduce human government today. Um, let's go to uh, uh, Romans uh, chapter 13. We're going to we're going to go through Romans chapter 13 and then. Uh, hopefully, on next Monday, we'll pick up human government. But I need to uh, go to the New Testament first uh, to lay a uh, factual foundational principle. All right? Then we're going to go back <clears throat> to Genesis chapter 8. All right? Let's go to uh, Romans 13 and 1. Now, Paul here. He was letting the believers know uh, that we are to be obedient to the government. All right? And, uh, and Christians need to understand that uh, if we agree to live uh, at peace, uh, we got to live not only by our uh, I would just say our spiritual convictions, hmm? but we got to live uh, right before the unjust. We got to live right before the unjust. I'll put it like that. We must live right before the unjust. And if we don't live right before the unjust, uh, Paul thought it was fitting to address this to the Romans. So let's take a look and see what Paul is talking about here. When we look at Romans 13. He says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. And he says, for there is no power but of God. Hmm? So we must understand before God, there was nothing. <laughs> let's just make it simple. All right. Before God established the foundations, there was nothing that man could establish after God created him, all right? So everything God did, he left the responsibility uh, uh, for man, all right? And the responsibility of man was to believe and obey, hmm? So now let's take a look. He says here, uh, so the powers that be are ordained of God. And he says, whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God. Hmm? And they uh, that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. It's very important. When he talk about higher powers, he's talking about governing authorities. Hmm? So when he uses the word damnation, he simply is dealing with judgment. Hmm? The law is for the lawbreaker. You break the law, the person is going to be brought before the judge, and the judge is going to weigh those actions. All right? Does that make, does that sound simple? All right. So it's very important that we take a look at these things 
and see that God established this. Since God established this principle, we must be mindful of it. Now, we're going to go into the government part of it because some people think, well, why do we have a government in the first place? <laughs> we're going to get into it. Let's take a look. He says in verse 3, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Hmm? The judge or the righteous huh, is not a terror for somebody doing good. It's only to punish the wrongdoer. All right? Let me just break it down for you. All right? So look, he says here, but to the evil, will thou then be afraid of the power? We should not be afraid of the power. We're not in the caveman days when, oh, let me quit. We're not in the caveman days when he accidentally makes a spark and gets fire, he runs from it. Hmm? We know that if we use the power right, it will benefit us for the good. But if we use it wrong, then we have the opposite. We'll have harm or we'll have evil. All right? So this is what he's trying to break down here. And he lets us know, without then be afraid of the power, do that which is good. And thou shalt have the praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. All glory be to God. But if thou do that which is evil, all glory be to God. Here's the warning right here. Hmm? Warning always come before destruction. But if thou do that which is evil, he says, be afraid. For he bear not the sword in vain, for he's the minister of God. Hmm? Now he's, he's dealing with government here. I just want to make sure we don't lose nobody. He's dealing with government, the order of government, how things should be handled in not only uh, the uh, world system, but in the church. All right. God is the God is the one that set up the government. All right. Some people say, oh, well, man set the government up. No, God sets the government. He set the kings up. He set the prophets up. He set the order. Hmm. Otherwise, when you look at 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians 14 and 40, he says, let all things be done decently and in order. God is a God of order. He's not a God of confusion. He's not the author of confusion, but he's the God of peace. All right. So he establishes government uh, for humanity to be governed. All right. Righteously. All right. But look at this. The government serves two purposes, <laughs> uh, huh? To work for our good, but also to punish the evildoer. All right, let's take a look. For he that be bearing not the sword in vain, for he's the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that do it evil. Hmm? He says, wherefore ye must need be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. Now, we just got through talking about conscience, but also for conscience sake. So it's simply saying, for conscience sake, to have an awareness of what you're, well, all glory be to God, to have an awareness that there is consequences to your action. All right? So it's very important that when we look at government, uh, nor worship God, and receives covenant and also responsibility, which gives him a warning seal. The warning never leaves. Oh, glory be to God, because God reestablishes, oh God, glory. Just because God reestablishes relationship that does not remove or retract or detract the warning. Oh, glory be to God. Hmm? We still have to have faith and obedience. We got to believe and still obey God even after he, oh, glory be to God, reestablish and re reconnects the relationship. We still need to obey God. Oh, glory be to God. 
huh? It does not give us a license to go on a tangent and go do what we want to do, but we still have to follow after God's commands. Let me get let me get down to verse six. I got to let you go. I got to get out of here now. We're closing. I got to let you go. I got about five minutes left. He says here in verse six, Romans 13 and six, he says, for this cause, pay tribute also, for they are God's ministers. <laughs> Paul's talking about pay tribute, all right? Attending, continuing upon this very thing, render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, and honor to whom honor. So Paul goes down the whole line. Hmm? He goes down the whole thing about our responsibility huh, to reverence and respect those that are in authority. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Hmm? Not only in the government, but in the church. And for some reason, we think because we're in the church, we have no responsibility to pay tribute. Oh, glory be to God. To our leaders, our pastors, and to those that got the rule over us. Hmm? We feel like uh, they should they should work for free and only God should pay them. <laughs> Let me get out of here. I got to go. Huh? But God sets the order. <laughs> Let me get out of here. I got to go. And so, yes, we need to give the men and women of God. Yes, we need to take care of our responsibility. Praise God. Hmm? I just want to lay it out there. And so sometimes we feel like uh, we just take our our um, uh, our blessings and we just use them for us when we don't do nothing to benefit, uh, to, to show love to those that serve uh, us in the gospel, in the ministry, or even in the governing body of Christ. Hmm? Not only the legal government. These people, these these congressmen, the all of their, you know, these congressmen that's not working for you in your state, you paying them. <laughs> Let me get out of there. I got to go. I want to stay with government, though. You're paying them, and they not even doing what you want them to do. Go oh, glory. They just passed a bill about the government shutdown. Hmm? Just now passing it two days before, two or three days before it expired. <laughs> Let me get out of here. Huh? And so if we can pay them unrighteous folk, Praise God. Hmm? That God is set up to run our natural government. Surely we can take care of our pastors, our bishops, and those that rule in the house of God. Praise God. So I know I'm messing up, but we're going to get back to government. Uh, that was just my ending clause in, in the statement there. As we look at man's responsibility, Noah uh, worships God. We're going to talk about that uh, hopefully next week, Monday. But we're going to do prayer on Friday if the Lord's will. Uh, Nor receives uh, a covenant. <clears throat> and he also uh, also has a responsibility connected with that covenant. And so we're going to talk about it on next week if the Lord's will. As we talk about government and how, how it plays the role, how we can see personal disorder. We're going to still talk about the believe and obey. We're going to talk about personal disorder, and then we're going to talk about societal disorder, all right? We're going to talk about these things. We're going to talk about personal disorder and societal disorder. And uh, one of the meat topics we're going to be talking about, and I'm just sharing, giving you a quick uh, synopsis of what we're going to cover. We're going to talk about uh, man's failure. Hmm? When man moves away from God, when man leaves from the presence of God, when man deviates from God, hmm, we can see failure on all oh, glory be God on the horizon. All right. And I don't want nobody to think that you can walk away from God. You can leave God. You can do it if you want to. But we're going to see and we're going to point through these lessons and through these series that you will see a downward spiral, a downward trend. That's related to humanity and all of those that uh, uh, transition or moved away from God, we can see failure. All right. And so we're going to point some of those things out. We're going to reference some scriptures so we can know, even no matter what dispensation we talk about, even under grace, 
we cannot afford to leave God now. And so we're going to we're going to be talking about some things. So you we want the people of God to be encouraged. We love you with the love of the Lord. Um, I also want to give my sidebar. I gave part of it earlier, but want to thank and praise God for the Pentecost Power Church Choir Annual. Uh, we give God praise for them doing an excellent job on this uh, past weekend uh, on the revival nights. Our choir annual revival was uh, excellent. And we want to uh, thank the choir and all of the choir members, including Missionary Newsom, who is our choir president, and to Mother Cookie, uh, which is Mother Lillian, who was the choir director, and all of those that helped and assisted and worked in different various capacities and did what you did, no matter how great or small. We want to say thank you and God bless you for making uh, this weekend be successful. And all of our speakers from uh, Pastor Lomax to uh, Bishop Eric Brown from uh, Haven uh, Hope International Ministries. Uh, what a word we got this past weekend. And so we we thank and praise God that uh, we still going to rejoice. All right. in the Lord. And so we thank God for um, a beautiful weekend. And we also remember to pray for um, Word of Life, uh, Pastor Lomax and the Saints there in Madison. Please pray for them that God will continue to encourage them and uh, be right there for the things that uh, they need uh, uh, moving forward. All right. So we'll just leave it right there. So with no further ado, we thank you for joining the Faith in God Internet TV broadcast. Uh, we want to um, <clears throat> take the opportunity to uh, thank you for joining. Please follow us on Friday. Uh, please come on our prayer touch and agree hour and pray with us, touch and agree with us. And it's designed not to keep you there for the whole 30 minutes or hour that we're doing in the prayer. It's called touch and agree. So if you're busy throughout your day and you're doing something and you got uh, 5, 10, 15 minutes, you want to join throughout the time that we're praying or if you want to stay the whole time, we ask that you would do that. But we want all believers to come in and pray with us and touch and agree uh, with any uh, time that you may have available to pray with us. All right. And so, again, I'm your host, Elder Gregory Newsom uh, with the Faith in God Internet TV. We want to say God bless you. We have some flyers and things that we're going to put up next week uh, for a, a way of announcement. So uh, with no further ado, uh, thank you for joining the Faith in God Internet TV. I'm your host, Elder Gregory Newsom. Until next time, may God bless you in Jesus name. God bless. <laughs>